Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, July 12th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington DC here from Sands Fire. Thanks to the listeners who attended the keynote today. It was available online. Not sure how many of you have watched it online. A recording should also be shortly available. The link on the website will eventually then link to the recording of this keynote. But well, of course, uh, today we do have Microsoft's Patch Tuesday to talk about. And well, it was a quite active release of new patches. 132 vulnerabilities were patched. Nine of the vulnerabilities are rated critical. And then we have six or five, depending on how you count, exploits that have already been seen used in the wild. So zero days. The reason I say, well, uh, that uh, there's five or six depending on your account, not all the zero days actually have patches. There is a special blog post by Microsoft about CVE 2023-36884. This is a remote code execution vulnerability in Microsoft Word. Yes, there are details about it. Yes, there are some workarounds for it, but there is no patch yet for it an out of cycle patch may follow shortly. Then there's also CVE 2023-35311. Uh, this is a Microsoft Outlook security feature bypass that's exploited in the wild. Exploit code can run in the preview pane. And essentially the bypass here is that security warnings are not being shown. And then also already exploited is a vulnerability in Windows MS HTML. This could be exploited by opening a crafted file in email or of course by visiting a malicious website. MS 2023-32049, this is another security feature bypass. Windows Smart Green, so the famous uh, mark of the web, is uh, being exploited that uh, in that you will not see the security warning if you open the file. And the last vulnerability with the CVE, CVE 2023-36874. Uh, this particular vulnerability is an approach escalation vulnerability that would gain local admin privileges. And the final issue is, well, technically not a vulnerability. It got an advisory from Microsoft. It's really a feature in the way how a kernel mode drivers are being signed. In newer versions of Windows, kernel mode drivers have to be properly signed by a Microsoft developer signature. The problem is that Microsoft tried to stay backwards compatible and allow older drivers to still work. As a result, they sort of put a deadline in there. If uh, the certificate was signed in 2015 or earlier, then it's still accepted as valid as long as it was signed with a certificate with a valid uh, certificate. What's happening now is that there have been uh, for a while now a couple of tools available that essentially allow you to backdate the signature. All you need is a certificate, a private key that you can use to sign your driver with where this particular certificate was valid at the time. And apparently there are a number of them that have been leaked and uh, that are easily available. What Microsoft did now is to essentially specifically block list these particular certificates and with that you know, make it a little bit more difficult. So now the attackers have to find new uh, League certificates in order to continue this game. So it kind of comes down to this uh, bring your own vulnerable driver attack. Uh, but of course, here you're using an actual malicious driver, not one that just happens to be vulnerable that you're then exploiting. And given the signature, you will not really see any warning from the operating system about this. Cisco Talus has a real good blog about this, and I'll link to that blog in the show notes. And yesterday I recommended that you apply the Apple Rapid Security Response Update that was released. It fixed actually being exploited vulnerabilities. Well, sadly, this may not have been the greatest advice. Sorry for that, because Apple now has withdrawn this particular update. The issue why it has been withdrawn seems to be actually pretty simple and stupid and something that uh, was mentioned 
with the first uh, update that was released like a couple months ago, the first rapid security response update in that your Mac OS and iOS version now includes a letter. So for example, for Ventura, you are at 13.4.1. If you apply the update, then you will be 13.4.1 and then a in parentheses to indicate that you applied this rapid security response update. Problem with this is that the OS version is included in Safari's user agent and apparently a number of different websites have now problems serving you content because they can parse your user agent string. Well, uh, Apple has withdrawn the update so you can no longer download it. If you don't experience any problem, just uh, keep it. It will probably be re-released shortly. Not exactly sure how the problem will be addressed. If they'll just change the user agent or if they'll actually introduce a different numbering scheme here. I'm also not sure why this didn't come up in the prior rapid security response update. Maybe in that case, they didn't change the Safari user agent. Either way, um, the update is no longer available and uh, should be re-released uh, shortly with some kind of fix. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.